Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How. And in this episode, a little bit different, a little bit different, thought I'd do a bit of a, a bit of a, uh, an update of the D-Max after towing this guy for about 2,600 kilometers. Let's get started. So I've had a bunch of you guys asking how the D-Max has gone. Uh, a few of you guys have, have commented, have been away for the last couple of weeks on a an epic road trip and it's been awesome and a real shakedown of of the d-max because it had only done sort of a thousand k's 1500 k's something like that so for this video we're going to run through a couple of different topics based on the comments and questions that i've been receiving both on youtube and on instagram check out the chapters down below if you'd like to skip ahead if you're watching this on youtube but other than that let's get stuck into it so first up, drivability. What was it like towing this guy, 2,800 kilos, 2.8 tonne with the D-Max? And I've got to say that overall, it was great. As far as the, the trip went, we are based in Brisbane. So we started in Brisbane, went south down uh, the coast road, all the way down uh, to, to Sydney and west of Sydney, out to some, uh, some property out there. And then on the, on the return leg, we went north on the New England Highway, including Putty Road and all of that fun stuff uh, towing this guy. So it was an adventure, let me, let me tell you. I, when, when going over Newcastle Bridge and that kind of thing, with this thing behind, it, uh, it, it does feel a little sway. But other than that, to be honest, I, I, I didn't really find too much, uh, too much sort of sway action or anything like this. D-Max had plenty of power uh, towing this up through the range, especially on the way home when we were coming north on the New England Highway, uh, some places outside Armadale and that sort of thing when you're, when you're going up the range, definitely put it through its paces, but didn't drop below 80 kilometers an hour going up some of those really hill, uh, really steep hills, which I was really surprised with. Obviously a few videos out there from some larger YouTube channels uh, than, than yours truly that talk about, oh, I don't know if I'd tow anything over sort of a camper trailer with this, with the dual cab ute, I just, after doing this, I just find that I, I would not hesitate in, in hooking, hooking something like this size up again and, and towing it because it, it did it fine. And you'll see in some of the other chapters here with fuel economy, etc., it did it really well. So overall for drivability, really impressed to be honest, uh, coming from a couple of different tow rigs before the D-Max, this thing uh, was nice and quiet. Fifth and sixth, you know, would, would hunt a little bit if you're sitting around 100 k's, which is what I was doing for almost the entire trip. I think the average over that 2,700 k's was, was 55 kilometers or something like that. So overall, very happy with the way that it towed. So next up, suspension, and how did it go? Stock suspension in this bad boy at the moment check out the little link up the top here if that video is out by the time you watch this because it is on the way bit of a uh, bit of a lift going on here and here but at the moment it's it was factory the factory uh, x-terrain suspension going on here this has a 260 kilogram downball weight and and the 2.8 worth in the, in the van and you can see that it doesn't sit too bad at all so I mean we've definitely got something on the back there let me see if I can get down here for you so overall, pretty good, pretty good. Those country roads, especially going when we're coming back north on the New England, aren't the greatest, that's for sure. And the 4,000 stops we had to do for, for road works and that definitely uh, speak to that. But overall, I think uh, the stock standard suspension handled this weight uh, really well. I think it could definitely help getting, getting some, some heavier duty springs in there if, if this is something that you're gonna to be towing all the time or regularly for the average tow or the average trip that sort of thing I, I think they did really well we didn't really have too much here in the tub we had some sort of luggage and that sort of stuff but nothing too crazy so you know overall I think it is fine for towing something like this it is a you know a brand new truck it had only done sort of 15 1600 kilometers when we started so you know time would tell if these things started getting a little bit worn but certainly uh, I, I wouldn't be too concerned but if you're gonna to be towing something this heavy, uh, this regularly, if I was, uh, I would be getting myself probably some airbags in there to help out uh, when the big load is on and then, you know, letting it down, letting it nice and, uh, and soft when you're, when you're not carrying the heavy stuff. 
So fuel economy is probably the next natural transition across, seeing though we just talked about the weight and, and what have you. This is where we're at. So total trip distance is right on that 2600 Ks. It's probably a little bit over that. I was a little bit slack in starting the, uh, starting, starting the clock. Um, but you can see over the 2600 kilometers for the total trip, we averaged 14.6 liters per hundred. So I am pretty stoked with that, to be honest. Towing, you know, 2800, there was some pretty gnarly uh, hills on the way back. Like I was saying, we went through Putty Road in New South Wales. If you're not familiar with that, have a bit of a Google. It's basically towing up some pretty helter skelter single lane type uh, range through um, some really steep hills and that sort of stuff. So it was definitely working through there uh, and, and then coming up New England you're going up and down hills all day long uh, so if you if you went the coast road that sort of thing on those sort of kilometers you I, I reckon you'd seen the 13s to be honest but for me 14.6 that's as real world as it gets 2600 towing 2.8 and, and a real mix of around town in each of the venues we had a total of uh, 13 nights uh, in different caravan parks and different places that sort of thing so uh, there was definitely a mix of, of city and and uh, and highway, probably 70, 30. So that's that's about as real world as it gets. 2,600 and averaged 14.6. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, you know what you're getting, or uh, any other cars that you've you've had similar loads on on the back, and and you know what sort of mileage you were getting. I mean, I'm, I'm coming from. From Jeep World, where I had um, you know Jeeps and that sort of thing for for a whole bunch of years, and the last one being a, a 2.8 turbo diesel, and that was factory like that 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 was that was completely unladed, just cruising around. Yeah, warranted, it was uh, just a little bit built and that sort of thing. You can see the uh, the vids up there if you if you're interested in checking that uh, that out. I still I still miss it. That that was I was. That was kind of the norm for 14. So I'm I'm coming from a place where that was the norm. So I'm 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 more than happy. I reckon that is is fantastic. If if um you know I'm towing that sort of load as well. But but let me know in the comments uh, what you think. All right. So on to temperatures. Now I thought this was really interesting, and and some of you guys might obsess over this like me uh, more than others. So if you're not interested in this, skip ahead to the next chapter. But something that I got really stuck into looking at pretty regularly was live live temps. I use a, an app called Talk Pro, uh, which is this guy here, and uh, underneath the footwell here, I have an OBD sensor plugged in. I'll put a link in the description of the one that I use if you're interested. But if you haven't used it before, it is pretty cool because what it does is allows you to set full basically uh, ECU data and display it. And uh, in this case, I'm using uh, just my phone with the uh, quad lock wireless charging mount, which to be honest, this is this is the best thing I've found uh, as far as keeping your phone nice and sturdy. So anyway, I'll, I'll find a link and chuck it in the description if you wanna look at that. But this is the, the Talk Pro. So I had that running most of, most of the drive and I've just got it set up so that I've got intake temps, I've got uh, what our volts are on our battery and what have you, our actual intercooler temps coming through, our coolant temp, uh, both of the EGT sensors, and our overall boost. So fun fact, the maximum boost that the D-Max puts out is about the 22 PSI. Interestingly, compared to the Jeep that I had before, the 2.8 turbo diesel, which was also 22 PSI, it would get to 22 PSI all the time, just cruising around. This, in the D-Max, very rarely got to 22. It was really only when you were really stressing it that it would give you the full beans. That was, that was really interesting. I found most of the time this thing would probably stick to around the sort of the 10 PSI, which is which is probably why the uh, the fuel is, is so great. Coolant temps, the maximum I saw was 92 degrees, and I think that is just absolutely fantastic. There are no, this is completely stock engine bay. You've seen all the vids and the mods that I've done to, to the uh, to the D-Max so far. 92 was the absolute max I saw on here, and that was climbing that big range outside of Armadale, I'm pretty sure, but it's a super, super long, uh, steep climb that goes for about 10-15 minutes 
and 92 is the most, which I was just blown away by. EGT maxed out at 500 degrees on that climb and, and came down quite quick. So overall attempts, really impressed, sort of hovered coolant wise around the 88 degrees. These guys hovered around the sort of 300 degree mark, uh, but overall just absolutely fantastic. I am trying to get a, a custom code for the auto transmission for the D-Max. So if you know what that custom PID is, please let me know in the comment below. I'm still doing the Google search to try uh, try and find it. So ideally I'll have the, uh, the auto temp coolant, uh, the EGTs boosts, and then the cold air and, and intake temps there. So if I do find that out, I'll make sure I update the description of this video. Now while we're on the top topic of temperatures, it was really interesting to see when uh, the uh, DPD did a burn. And I could see that in the live temps. So you can see that here's our sort of average temps. And then all of a sudden, this is on the freeway, this would happen. And it was, it was I only noticed it when we were going south, probably because it was going up and down so many hills, the CGT was fluctuating anyway. But on the freeway, it was sort of constant at these temps and it wouldn't sort of carry on too much. It was, it was pretty standard. But then all of a sudden, bam, we'd be, we'd be right up there in the sort of the 600s on the second sensor and lower on the first. So you could see that that's, that was it in motion. It was sort of creating that sort of blockage so it would really superheat and then, uh, and then release. So it would take about that sort of 10 minutes-ish uh, that was sort of doing 100 k's an hour, and uh, you know, pretty straight on the on the on the freeway, not sort of hilly or anything like that. And yeah, take about 10 minutes, and then that temp would just plummet back down to sort of the standard temps at around, you know, in the 300s uh, around that mark. So, just really interesting. I thought I, I on the way down, it it actually did it a couple of times uh, over over the course of five days, probably two or three times it completed a burn. But, uh, but there you go, they were, that's the max temp that, uh, that it gets to when, when your DPD is doing a burn and, and yeah, takes, takes about 10 minutes to complete. Now, safety settings or safety uh, DAS, IDAS, all of those sort of settings, super bony contention, super controversial of course, if you've been doing any sort of reading on the DMAX and looking at the forums and that sort of stuff, you'll know that not many people are happy with it. My opinion, was that it was okay. I definitely think there should be a, you know, a button or something somewhere that you just can go, I'm towing, boom, and it turns off all the bits and pieces. Or even better, you plug the thing in the back to turn off the rear parking sensors. Why doesn't that turn off the other recommended settings for the for the D-Max? I, I, I don't understand. But anyway, I didn't find it too bad. However, I did find probably one out of two times we take off in the morning I forgot and then of course you can't change these settings this little the the actual settings icon doesn't even appear if you're in motion right you got to be you got to be stopped so probably one in two times me just being a adult would forget and would, would then have to find a spot to stop to then turn all the settings off to get going again so let me show you the settings that I chose and if you haven't turned them off or you're not sure which ones I'll step you through how to do it so you've got to be you got to be stopped I don't think you've got to be in park but you've got to be stopped and then what you'll see using your left right and enter buttons the extra option will turn up which is the little cog so you just press on him and then there's a couple of things you need to turn off so go into driver support settings and I go down straight to automatic emergency braking, brake warning, and then just disable. So you give that a little bit of a think, and then we can get out of that one. Then go back up. It's kind of like in the same driver support settings, if you, if you know what I mean. So there's one on that page, and then go down to the next page into the lane support, and this is where you want to turn off your ELK or your emergency lane keeping. I turned the uh, lane departure prevention, put that on warning only, but you can turn that off. I just wanted it so that little lines would still work and tell me if I was uh, getting out of the lane. And then ELK, you want to disable there as well. And that was it. And the kind of the cool thing is it defaults to end, so you just had to hit that a couple of times and you're back and you're away. So that's how you turn off those bits and bobs. I did use the radar cruise the entire time. I had no troubles with that at all. I just kept it at the maximum setting 
so that there was you know plenty of room uh, in front before the the next car the, the cruise worked absolutely flawlessly and and was great but that were the settings that i used mirrors there's these upgrades which uh, are quite expensive so you know it's like I, i've been thinking as well do i need them is it something that i would use that's kind of been my view for the last two and a bit weeks out that way and uh, then out that way these mirrors are pretty good i reckon uh, this van is quite long as we've we've looked at i reckon these go pretty well however I can definitely see the advantage of the bigger mirrors or the ones that extend out because it's it's really difficult to see the back of that thing um, when you're when you're turning. Uh, I had to take it, you know, really easy and really wide going around roundabouts and that kind of thing to be able to really see the back of it. And particularly when you're reversing is is the main one as well. So I haven't had any experience with those little clip-on mirrors. I don't know what they're like. Uh, let me know in the comments below if, you, if you've used them and, and whether it's worth getting a set. Kind of on the fence. I can see their value. I'm, I'm on the fence whether I, I would get a pair. I think if I was towing that really regularly, then I, I would probably invest in a set uh, to, to help out with that visibility. And last thing to talk about in the inside is the brake controller, or for most people, it's probably gonna be living over here. I did a brake controller install video. You can check that out up the top here with the, the Heyman Reese, uh, Reese set up here. I am, an after driving all that way, I think it is crazy when they put them over here because I didn't need to really hit the sway controller, what have you thankfully like the emergency uh stop button but you've got buckley's if it's over here uh, and and even when i was originally installing this in the blank spots that are originally over here when you're in drive that's it's directly in the way so you can't really see what setting you've got it on so i don't know I, if if i was isuzu which clearly i'm not and i'm not the professional and i'm not engineer and all that sort of stuff but i, I just i found that to be a great spot and I'm a little bit biased because that's where I put it of course but I sort of spent a fair bit of time having to play before I did any install going well where's going to be the most logical spot and I'm really glad that I put it there so uh, the reason for that is it's so easy when you're driving it's easy to just if there's an emergency scenario and that thing back there swaying like crazy it's easy to just go bam hit that maximum brakes there's no sort of mucking around you know fiddling down here trying to find where it is obviously if you're in an emergency situation it's 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 go time so that that was the number one for me but then the other thing is anyone who's towed a lot you'll know that sometimes you'll have the perfect setting you're on the freeway fine but then you get into town and it's way too sensitive it's it's you need to turn it down real easy so i just found sort of cruising once we got into town it was easy just to you know be able to give that a bit of a an adjust on the fly just really comfortably without having to sort of look over here and try and find where anything is or or uh, where I was going to put it originally over here. So that's my two cents. The actual Heyman Reese brake controller itself went flawless. It was great. The actual LED and what have you worked really well. Uh, foot on the brake there. You can see it, it tells you when it's activated. So that's really handy in, in telling you you're nice and hooked up behind there as you take off in the mornings. And then you've got the the boost as well as the uh, the fine tuning there as well. But that I, I I really rated. If you want more information on that, check out the video in the in the top corner for the full install video. And finally, the rear bar update. So as you'll know from the install video, we went with the TJM rear bar rather than just the factory tow bar. And I'm I'm really glad I did. Um, the extra step at the back worked really, really well and was helpful when we we're sort of hitching up, putting things on, that sort of thing. So that was kind of cool. I did end up flipping the tow bar around just to get a little bit of extra height. This van was just, it was just riding a little bit lower when I had it the other way around. Overall, absolutely no regrets in getting the full bar over just the tow ball. I would definitely do that again, particularly that this guy is only a couple of hundred. I think it was only about 200 bucks more than the, the, the tow bar, or even about the same price from people I've seen online getting quoted by some dealers uh, just for the tow bar. Definitely, uh, definitely recommend it. Well, there you go, guys. I hope that you found that helpful. If you have a D-Max or you're considering a D-Max or you're wondering whether your D-Max can tow something that's, uh, that's bigger than the norm, 
It definitely can, it definitely can, and you'll enjoy, it'll love every minute of it. If you've towed something of a similar size, or you're about to, what have you, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear how you go, and what your thoughts are, and whether you experience the same as what I did. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a bit of a thumbs up if that's your style. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and share with any of your mates that may be interested in the same sort of gear. Sharing is probably the number one thing that really helps the channel grow and I'd really appreciate it. Other than that, as always guys, I hope that you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys.